Hi everyone, welcome back to Pretty Well. Dr. Angela here with you. It's so nice to be back. I took a couple month break, as many of you who tune in regularly may have noticed. I've had a lot going on. Uh, definitely relocation stuff due to COVID in terms of restructuring how I work. I've had some illness in my household that's needed some attention and I have had some of my own kind of mysterious health symptoms going on, uh, done lots of work up and you know nothing was really showing up and then I had this intuition one day to check myself for mold toxicity and sure enough I have some elevated mycotoxins that need to be dealt with some uncovering of mold in the household uh, it turns out so i'm actually going to do a video for you guys on that because mold toxicity is actually really common and we really don't test for it very much um, in our conventional medicine circle um, so it's one of those things i think that we ought to get educated on so that we know the signs and so we can think about doing testing if we've tested for a bunch of other things and nothing's showing up and we're just not feeling quite right because we live in our bodies and we know our bodies and so as i was doing all this you know reading about mold toxicity and mold recovery um, lo and behold glutathione is there um, front and center stage um, and by the way i'm in the backyard uh, due to covid this is my new recording studio so you might hear some uh, neighborly tunes. I'm listening to some music coming through from the neighbors or the fountain. So just we're going to flow with the backyard vibe. All right. So glutathione. Glutathione is an antioxidant. It's a major antioxidant. So we have lots of antioxidants in the body. I love talking about antioxidants. Um, they're so important for our mitochondrial health. Uh, glutathione is one of the key antioxidants in our body. Having adequate levels of reduced glutathione, sometimes abbreviated as GSH, and I'll put this all in the description box below, really, really important for keeping um, oxidative damage under control in our bodies. You know, we get lots of assault from free radicals oxidative stress in our daily lives depending on what's happening sometimes it's things like air pollution when we had all those fires dr patty and i had put together some videos on lung health and we talked about glutathione back then because glutathione is one of the most potent free radical scavengers it protects all of our cells from dna damage that can occur if we have unchecked free radical damage, oxidative stress going on. We also constantly, you know, uh, come into contact with chemicals in our food, especially if we're not eating organic foods, herbicides and pesticides can be a source of oxidative stress and damage, um, free radical damage. A lot of those chemicals cause those types of reactions in our bodies. Um, Exercise is really helpful, but overtraining could be another reason why we might need higher antioxidants in the body. Definitely, if we have lifestyle choices like consuming quite a bit of alcohol or smoking cigarettes or cigars, those type of behaviors will definitely increase oxidative stress in our body. So why do we care if we have increased oxidative stress? Well, we can definitely get damage done to our DNA, which that essentially translates to um, premature aging, degenerative changes. A lot of what we think about as aging um, is actually degenerative changes in the body that can occur due to insufficient levels of certain nutrients that help us ward off some of the consequences of these environmental and lifestyle assaults. And so glutathione is a key antioxidant, a key free radical scavenger. And if we have higher levels of glutathione, and the body does make glutathione, but we can also um, help our bodies make more and keep our intracellular levels higher by doing certain things I'm gonna talk about. Um, but if we have higher glutathione levels, we also end up bringing up other levels of antioxidants like vitamin C and vitamin E. And what's interesting is sometimes taking other antioxidants like alpha lipoic acid, for example, helps us keep our glutathione levels higher. And so um, a lot of our antioxidants work as a team and they help recycle one another and they help protect us in various ways. So it's 
super important and um, proactive to work to keep all of our antioxidant levels high and especially glutathione. And many of you guys are curious, like how do I know what my glutathione levels look like? It's a great question. Um, it can actually be ordered on conventional blood panels. So like, you know, through the major labs like Quest or LabCorp, you can have a glutathione level checked. Um, you can also have a GGT level checked. That is um, a liver enzyme and oftentimes if that uh, GGT level is abnormal, um, elevated, it's a marker of increased environmental toxicity and it's a need for increased glutathione need. So those are very easy to order on conventional lab panels. There's also really great, um, you know, very expansive nutritional panels that um, any integrative doctor, certainly naturopathic doctors, acupuncturists, chiropractors, um, certainly integrative MDs as well will be familiar with and can help you order. Um, two of them that I order quite a bit in my practice, uh, the Nutra Eval, um, this is a blood and urine test. They now have a urine test that can be done at home from Genova um, that measures not only glutathione, but many other antioxidants as well. Looks at mitochondrial function and Spectracell for years has had their micronutrient panel. So I always think it's wonderful to get a baseline to see how we're doing with our nutritional status. Um, you know, if there's any areas where we are depleted, certainly to work to replete and then to monitor our health, you know, monitor these markers on a very regular basis, maybe every six months, once a year, just kind of checking in and seeing how's our body doing with all of these protective markers. So in addition to the, um, antioxidant capacity that glutathione has. It's also a major, major detoxifier of, um, it helps with liver detoxification. So it's very helpful in our detox pathways. Um, so also very important for getting rid of harmful environmental toxins and chemicals we might be coming into contact with. It's also um, a cofactor for just many of the enzymatic pathways that are important throughout our body. So um, having repleted levels of glutathione keeps us healthy systemically. Uh, it's great for brain health, it's great for lung health, liver health, keeping our immune systems in check, eye health in terms of vision and also hearing. And so on the flip side, if we have uh, depletions in glutathione, if you know, sometimes just, you know, genetically we can have a weak spot and we can certainly look at our genetics um, and work on our epigenetics, but just kind of look at what our predispositions might be. Some of us might not recycle our antioxidants as efficiently as others due to SNPs. Um, and then we can have, you know, a lot of times these lifestyle factors, our diet isn't quite um, full spectrum, maybe we're not eating enough vegetables. So um, the veggies that are gonna really help with glutathione repletion, anything that's very sulfur rich. So asparagus, onions, um, all of the brassica family veggies like broccoli and broccolini and um, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, all the mustard greens, kale, those are gonna be super sources to help us get our intracellular glutathione levels up. Mushrooms are very helpful, a nice uh, rich source of sulfur. So those are a lot of the veggie choices. Um, avocados actually are great too. Um, and then if you eat animal proteins, beef, chicken, fish, uh, very good sources, organ meats to help us replete our glutathione levels, the original of those precursor aminos and peptides that help us make up glutathione. And if you tolerate dairy, whey protein is another source. Many of us don't eat dairy. Many of us are vegan in this community. Many of us, you know, do eat meat. So it's just, you know, choosing the sources that are gonna work best for you, but just making sure we're making good lifestyle choices to help us keep our glutathione levels replete. So those are some of the dietary pieces. Um, what's interesting is there are some lifestyle pieces as well. You know, back to the basics. We always talk about the basics and they sound so just like, you know, we've known about them for years. They can't be that significant, but there are studies now and I will put the links in the description boxes so you can read them for those of you who are interested. But getting adequate sleep is really important in maintaining um, healthy 
reduced glutathione levels in your tissues. If we are underslept chronically, we continue to make um, more free radicals. We have more oxidative stress. We deplete our glutathione levels. So make sure to get adequate rest and particularly sleep. Sleep is super important. Um, exercise, exercise is really key. Having regular exercise helps us keep glutathione levels sufficient, but if we overtrain, we can create more oxidative stress, and then we just need to take more antioxidants to combat that. Um, interesting, I read a study that actually uh, supported meditation as increasing glutathione levels. I thought that was really neat, you know, because we talk about mind-body connection a lot, but it's wonderful to see science actually showing us, indeed, it's been studied that people who meditate um, have higher production, have higher intracellular levels of glutathione. So that's a great one to do too, just regular mindfulness practices. Um, you know, in general, if we help uh, proactively keep our nervous system in parasympathetic nervous system tone. That's really our rest, digest, repair mode. So, you know, fight or flight that we talk about is sympathetic autonomic nervous system tone. We, we need both to do different things, but a lot of us get kind of stuck in the sympathetic nervous system tone a lot and don't focus as much on the restorative parasympathetic nervous system tone. And so meditation would fall into that. Breathing exercises, sleep, of course. Um, anytime we're getting work done on us, like body work, those are all things that are gonna help with parasympathetic nervous system tone and they help us increase our glutathione, so very neat. And then we can also take certain key supplements to help us keep our glutathione levels elevated and replete. We can, of course, take glutathione directly. Um, there's been, you know, a lot of chat about the best way to absorb glutathione. It's not always absorbed well orally, but if we take liposomal forms of glutathione orally, they are very well absorbed. And so glutathione doesn't actually taste good at all. It's super stinky. It, it smells like sulfur, uh, so rotten egg smell, um, but it's very, very powerful. And so if you take a liquid liposomal like this, and there's several brands I love, I'll put them in the description box as usual. You guys can find them in um, our dispensary. You can find them. Um, on Amazon, you know, just uh, reputable sources. Um, but a lot of times I'll dilute glutathione, liposomal glutathione, if I take the liquid in some water, or I will add it to an ounce of a very high antioxidant juice, um, something like pomegranate juice or acai juice unsweetened. Um, so in terms of foods too, think about all of those pigments, any of those purples and reds, um, all of those big colors in nature and food are gonna give us a lot of anti an antioxidants. So we really wanna focus there. But so we can take liposomal glutathione. Um, you can of course get it intravenously if you're in a location where there are naturopathic doctors or medical doctors or osteopathic doctors who are doing IV uh, glutathione work. Um, Certainly, um, we can use it. Um, there's transdermal preparations, there's intranasal and nebulized preparations as well. So all of those are great direct um, repletion sources of glutathione. We can also take NAC. Um, I'll link the video. We've done a video in the past on supplementing with NAC as a precursor because it's one of the three peptides that glutathione is made up of. And so that's another effective way of helping us to get our glutathione um, levels up. One of the reasons we might choose glutathione directly over NAC at times is just if we're needing um, immediate levels of, you know, glutathione repletion. Um, and this is really where, you know, doing IV work as well can just be very quick. But, um, you know, somebody who's in an acute situation with you know, emphysema or something where um, acute respiratory distress syndrome has happened, um, some complication due to, could be flu, could be COVID, something like that where we need um, more rapid um, inflammation control. Glutathione can be very helpful in those kinds of situations, taking it directly. Um, taking milk thistle can be very helpful in helping our body replete glutathione levels, SAMe as well. I will um, say one little caveat, um, many of the nutrients that are gonna help us replete glutathione, so glutathione directly, 
NAC, um, some people will take um, MSM, so a lot of the sulfur-rich nutrients. If you take those and you get diarrhea, because it can happen for some, uh, you may want to think about doing some SIBO testing and rule out hydrogen-positive SIBO. Um, so just a little side tidbit, um, you know, because sometimes there's things that are really good for us, but we don't tolerate them, and so we always want to try to figure out, like, why are we not tolerating this nutrient that's so good for our bodies? Um, so those are a few of the things on how to replete uh, nutrient-wise glutathione. Also um, alpha-lipoic acid, that's another really good one. And so, um, you know, the take home is that if we keep our glutathione levels replete, we have a much better chance of warding off some of the chronic degenerative illnesses that are associated with low glutathione. And so I'm just going to kind of rattle off a few just to kind of give you guys um, an understanding, a picture of how pervasive it is, you know, just how many cells in our body, in our various organs, really need glutathione. So in our brain, if we don't have enough glutathione, if we have too much oxidative stress, we are really going to be prone to neurodegenerative disorders. So that looks like things like Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, dementia. Um, you know, we don't want any of those. Um, in our eyes, we can deal with things like macular degeneration, glaucoma, um, definitely, you know, all kinds of vision changes. Uh, we are more prone to hearing loss if our glutathione levels are low. We can have immune system dysregulation if glutathione is low, so that means autoimmune conditions. Um, people who have uh, viral infections like HIV need higher glutathione levels. Um, all cancer, cancer is certainly a situation where oxidative stress runs really high and glutathione can be really needed. There's a complicated conversation that you would talk to your integrative oncologist, naturopathic oncologist about because if you are undergoing certain, you know, forms of treatment like chemotherapy, you know, you need to be thoughtful around some of those treatments, but your naturopathic oncologist will be able to help you with that or other integrative healthcare specialist. Um, liver, we can have fatty liver disorders, all kinds of liver issues if we are not replete in glutathione in the liver. So as you can see, you know, we need glutathione for so many systems in the body. I will put all of this information in a summarized form in the description box. If you guys have questions about glutathione, please add them to the comments below. Those of you who know the answers, chime in and help us answer. Um, tell us what you want to keep learning about. Dr. Patty and I do our best to read all the comments and try to make content for you guys based on what you're asking about. We're so, so happy to have you here with us in the community. We love you all. We really hope this helps you continue to be well on your healing journey, on your health and wellness journey. And we look forward to seeing you back here next week. Um, if you are not a subscriber and you want to get notified when we upload new content, just hit the subscribe button and um, let us know anything else you want to let us know. Thanks so much for being here. Take care, everyone.